To start, I'm going to be making a sliding cut that goes between the two halves, which is legitimately the hardest part of the project as I'll need to turn around the ends on this square stock to fit a bearing precisely, and I'll need to repeat this perfectly four times, which has never happened before. Since I do not have an auto centering forge or chuck or some special collets for centering square stock, I am doing it manually using my dial indicator. Annoying at first, I accidentally adjusted the blank to be whole millimeters off centered as I only paid attention to the long hand and not the short hand. Luckily, I realized it pretty soon after I started turning because the cuts were just oddly uneven, so I was able to readjust it, this time paying close attention to both hands. And that looks a lot better. This is the bearing that I'm trying to fit and it has an inner diameter of 12 millimeters. At this stage, my stock is only about 16.0. So I've still got four mil to reduce in diameter, which means I need to go a further two mil in radius. I did put a dial indicator on the bed of the lathe so to account for some of the flex in the cross slide. However, it wasn't very effective due to the vibrations of the lathe. You know how... <laughs> you know how I said the inner diameter of the bearing was 12 millimeters. Well, it turns out it's actually 15. And I just turned the thing to exactly 12.0. <sighs> See, that's, that's how I get depression right now. Because now it's like way too loose. Yeah, I probably should take a break and play some sad music before doing the next one. Upon some more attempts and rethinking on my current method, I came up with a better way of turning these axles. First of all, assume the worst case scenario where none of the blanks are the same length. So before anything happens on the lathe, we mark out the contours by referencing against the same edge. Also, always buy a third spare one in case of Murphy's Law. Found that the distance between the two round ends is actually a critical measurement and should be the same in both axles, so I mark them together. Then it's the usual procedure of centering it on the lathe using a dial indicator. You read off the lowest value on the dial and tighten or loosen the jaws accordingly until both opposing sides have the same reading. It is important to keep in mind that I am turning the non-referencing side first. At this stage, it wasn't too important to turn it up to the marks that we marked earlier, it just needs to be close and less. For my attempts, I kind of generalized a few rules when trying to turn a piece of metal to fit a bearing. Firstly, always triple make sure the inner diameter of the bearing. Secondly, always remember that any movement in a cross slide translates to twice of that inner diameter of the stock. Then most importantly, trust the measurement of your calipers more than the actual fit of the bearing. This is kind of contradictory to other concepts, but a good fit for a bearing is a press fit, which usually can't be easily done on lathe, so it's better to trust the measurement given by the calipers when it's still in the chuck. Once it was turned to the correct diameter, accurate to two decimal places, I used the center drill to create a hole. Then I flipped it around and turned the other side. I could then remove the 4-jaw chuck and replace it with my 3-jaw, which is auto-centering. I placed a piece of metal as a spacer between the chuck and the axle, and tightened the live center against the axle, using the hole we drilled earlier on the non-referencing side. 
I added tape to the axle pretty soon afterwards to protect the metal. Now I can use my potting tool to move out the steps on the axle. After each step, I swap out the axle with the other one while maintaining the same carriage position on lathe. This ensures that the steps on both axles are from the same distance. Then I just move the carriage to align with the next mark on the metal and make the next cut. To make the cut that establishes the distance between the two bearings, I'm using my magnetic base and calipers to set it up. The extra 2.4mm is to account for the width of the cutter. The last one is just offset by a millimeter, so I can use my dial indicator for that. Now this method basically ensures that I get two dimensionally identical pieces of axles, and that is quite crucial for the cart because the bearings need to be parallel with each other in order for it to slide properly onto the rails. With the axles done to a position that I like, I can now move on to the wooden parts of the cart. I am pondering over a little bit whether I should just glue all the layers together or whether I should just bolt them together without glue. Now if I just glue them together, the additional moisture of the glue would induce a chance that would warp the boards, uh, which I really don't want since this needs to be as precise as possible. Uh, if I bolt them together however, I might have the chance of the layers separating in the future, which would be very bad. In addition, uh, drilling the holes for the bolts is kind of difficult when there's so many parts there. So I might go with just gluing it together. The glue up is similar to how the links for the pencil router is done, which helps to ensure proper alignment. I just changed my mind again. Seeing how I'll need to press the bearings on to the axles, I'm not going to glue the top layer on, so that I can still remove the axles when necessary when I need to press the bearings in. For only the first four holes, I inserted the bolts that I am using into the holes, so that I can remove the clamps and avoid having them in the way. I deliberately left drilling the holes for the axles last because it is a lot more complicated than the others. First of all, we have to drill through 16mm of mild steel and then I also have to make sure that both axles are parallel with each other and also in line perfectly with each other. To do that, I'm going to be using a stack of metal, each with a thickness of 5mm, so 4 of them stacked together should give me 20 and I'll just clamp that on the side here and then use another piece of metal to line the axle so that it is exactly 20mm from the edge. And then the other side as well. Beautiful but deadly. I can then insert a bolt into one of the holes with the axle in place and drill through the other hole. I then repeat this by swapping the bolt over. With the bearings just loosely fitted on the ends, this is how the cut would look like on the final product, a combination of metal and MDF. The last bit to do to finish off the cart is to make the end caps that go on the end and that is supposed to hold up the brush which is supposed to brush off any dirt and debris that accumulates on the rails. Since the body of the brushes is aluminium, I can cut it with the table saw. 
Now these brushes have a flat bottom and that makes them quite effective when you sweep against a flat surface. But when you put it against a round bar, they tend to part open as you sweep along. And that's no good as dust would start to accumulate over there and start to jam up the bearing. So I'm going to cut a round shape in the middle of the bristles and also make it a bit shorter because it is currently way too long. Cutting bristles is way more difficult than what it appears to be. Kind of wish I had a round punch that could just do the job. Not exactly pretty, but should do the trick. I could be a hairdresser after this. Time to tap some holes. The longer the holes, I'm tilting a piece of aluminium around. Uh, no, I actually did not mess up this time. Uh, the holes don't align right now because I haven't pressed the bearings fully in yet, which I am going to do now so that I can actually try out the brushes. The axles are quite tight as I had turned them to 15.00 plus or minus 0.01 millimeter. So to help me press these in more easily, I'm going to put the axle in the fridge and leave the bearings on my workbench during a very sunny day. Once again, I've got the axles in my lunchbox with an ice block in it to keep it to temperature and I've got my vise set up to start pressing. Hopefully it all goes smoothly. This probably isn't very healthy for the wooden jaws of my vise. So on one side I clamp a piece of metal off cut from buying the metal for this project and on the other side I place a crowbar that I got from the local Christmas market. I know, it was pretty weird when everyone who walked out the market was carrying intricate gifts and food while I was carrying some second hand tools calling them treasure. With that, the cut for the sliding table is finally done, excluding the coat of varnish that I'll put at the very end. I uh, still have the base and the top to make, so I'll do that in the next video.